Um, I actually don't usually write songs with a gendered pr protagonist okay. in mind. So for me, when I'm singing, you have become like other men, but let me kiss you once again. I'm not thinking of, of that protagonist as being either male or female. Uh, only the antagonist is clearly male. Um, but although I have a, a baritone voice, I, I sometimes sing in female characters, sometimes male characters are generally no gender at all. Um, and I, I, I give the, the women singers in the band pretty randomized gendered characters as well. Uh, I like to mix up the, the genders, but it's hardly ever the case that I'm actually assigning a gender to the protagonist, because I feel like we should all be able to identify with the protagonist. Um, whereas it doesn't really matter that much what the, what the gender of the antagonist is. So I don't really think of myself as a same-sex songwriter so much as a, ge a freely gendered, mm -hmm. non-gendered. Uh, well, that's more than most narrator. people. That's that's more than most people are doing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you reach well, out to people except, that way. Except if you just don't use pronouns in your songs, and most songs you just say don't. You most of songs right. don't have pronouns. Right. Uh, it's one in a hundred songs is a girl, except in hip hop. Where it's almost always the almost always gender, uh, unless it's about um, uh, economics or, or violence or, or something. But most songs in any genre, except heavy metal, uh, are s somewhat like love songs. Uh, well, even even in um, genres where where the where the singer or, or speaker is screaming or yelling, it's usually about something to do with love. Um, and most, most of the songs don't have pronouns. Um, so anyway, <laughs> yeah. you, you like uh, songs that do have pronouns and, and that imply a same-sex relationship. Not reflexively, but a good song with a with the same sex pronoun in it will make you pretty excited. What about a, a mediocre or a bad song? Like I'll just probably get annoyed. Pronoun. Will you buy the record? No. No. For that reason, I'd say that those artists depend on people buying the records just because they're gay, and that's what I think a lot of the gay media subsists on. Also, I'm gay. I did this. Ergo, you're gonna buy it. I used to review books for the Washington Blade. I just read shit. Oh. Like, uh, piles and piles of shit. Coming out stories, first novels. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I read a spiritual, a book of spiritual gay stories that was just terrible. It was basically a chat book. Uh -huh. One guy's cat turned into a twin, and he fucked his cat. I'm digressing again, but just like stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, that I don't... It sounds like a good idea for a song, though. <laughs> Not so much a good idea for a story. I'll send you this book if I can find it. You'll probably have a field day with it. No. Thank you. <laughs> I've got my plot idea from the book now, and I, right. I'll just run with that. I don't want to diminish it for you by actually having you read the thing. Call it, you are a cat. <laughs> Kitty, your dick is too long. No, no, you are a cat, like I am a cat, the Japanese novel. Okay. You are a cat. <laughs> it would work. Yeah, so point being, I think that a lot of people just have this assumption that gay people will patronize them because they're gay, they do something at all. For me, if something is quality and it's done by an out-gay person, I'm going to be more excited by it. I think that's the benefit. Whereas I just... I don't know why I don't feel that way, but I, I don't really particularly patronize gay artists. Maybe because you are a gay artist. Gay artist. That may be. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I even notice. Mm -hmm. Here's a million dollar question. How do you feel about being called a gay artist? I know some people really bristle with that one. Um, my publishing company is called Gay and Loud. If I didn't want to be called <laughs> a gay artist, I should have come up with something a little more original. Right. That's good. You don't have some people, again, keep going with knee-jerk reactions. They'll just spout for hours about how I'm not a gay artist, I'm an artist. Don't pigeonhole me, which well, bugs me. But I'm a lyricist, so uh, I can't really avoid that. If I were a surf guitarist, <laughs> then I would probably uh, have the same shtick. Right. But I'm not, so. 
no one says gay guitar is Dick Dale. It should just be weird. Sorry, that was the first sort of guitarist I could think of. I don't think he's actually gay. I don't... I really don't have gay dar from Dick Dale. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was one of my digressions. <clears throat> How do you feel about being compared to people like Cole Porter? Just kind of really... Not timeless, I guess you don't like that word, but people whose love songs have held up very well. Uh, I think Cole Porter is American shorthand for good lyricist. Um, uh, it's flattering to be compared to Cole Porter, but it would be nice if somebody could come, come up with something else. Leonard Cohen? That's pretty much it, really. Yeah, sings like Leonard Cohen, writes like Cole Porter. <laughs> I mean, I do sing like Leonard Cohen, but I don't really write like Cole Porter. <laughs> right. I just asked the idea that you write love songs that have held up very well. Like, how about this? Does it horrify you to think that in 60 years one of your songs could be in a movie preview? They're already in movie previews. Ad nauseum. Oh, you, oh, you mean uh, in 60 years it will still be in a movie preview? Yeah. Or again? Yeah. Which Wait, one? Um, both, still or oh, again. Okay. The way that James Brown, I feel good, is, you know, that equals happy movie preview. Would it, would it scare you to think that you could enter the American songbook so much that it would just be like that? Well, uh, delight me. They, they pay you for these things. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to slip into obscurity. Uh, I, I certainly hope that I will continue to be known and get paid for uh, until I die, and then, uh, and then for the life of my dog. <laughs> and if you could, um, if you could help drive a contemporary American gay culture in one direction, would you have any preferences about that? Many, yes. What would they be, Stephen? <clears throat> uh, well, um, responsible sexual behavior would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, less importantly, I think uh, there's too much damn disco. I'm with Quentin Crisp on this. A big problem with being gay is all the disco music you have to listen to. Now, in my case, it's my job to listen to disco music. I sit around in gay bars listening to thumping disco music. The more cliche, the better because I don't want to listen to it. I want to hear past it. Uh, and this is how I write songs. So I listen to even more gay, uh, gay bar music than everyone else does. But it doesn't mean I have to like it. <clears throat> anyway, you asked me politically not uh, as a matter of no, I'm cult like to ask culture questions sure. as well. Yeah, we're a culture website. It's our kind of stock mm -hmm. and trade, and we, Michael especially, <clears throat> hates trying to go to a gay bar on Tuesday and have a conversation with a friend, only to be essentially sitting next to Whitney Houston as she sings in your ear. So, uh, well, you know, go where the old people are, and the music will be quieter. If you want to hang out with the young and fabulous, bring earplugs and don't talk. <laughs> But if you want to hang out and have a conversation, go where the people who want to do that are, and the people who want to do that are over 35. <laughs> cool. Any parting words? Because your uh, tour manager is out there telling us it's time to go. Uh, I guess I have to go. It seems to be sound check. <laughs> but thank you for listening. Thank you for talking, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah, Stephen Merritt, listening to music in gay bars so we don't have to. Yeah. <laughs>